Okay. Once again, I tuned up my Magic Wand custom scanner and did an environmental scan of this small square where this nice looking public sculpture is located. The location was interesting and the condition in which I scanned this were just right. A cloudy day where the shadows were suitably soft and barely visible. And that's exactly the kind of thing that gives the best chance of turning day into night. Hello everyone, it's only here again. This time we are checking out something really cool and exploring what possibilities we have for modifying the lighting of Gaussian splatting model. You have probably seen old Hollywood movies where certain scenes were clearly shot during the day and then color corrected to the night scenes. Those look pretty funny in today's point of view, but even modern movies are still shot during the day and then changed to the night themes, especially if it supports the story. But is it possible to convert a 3D model which was scanned during the day into a night scene and rebuild its lighting? In environmental scans that are done outdoor under direct sunlight, this is inherently difficult. Because in Gaussian splatting models, the scanned moment is saved as is, and all the lights and shadows are baked into the model structure. And since the Gaussian splatting models are not made of classic textures, it is even more difficult for us to try to clean up sharp shadows from the splat surfaces. Therefore, scans like this, performed in cloudy weather with consistent light, provide a better opportunity to create more believable lighting scenarios. Which brings us to the point. What are the tools we can use to influence the lighting of Gaussian models then? We will need the Unreal Engine and alongside it a tool set called Volinga. Volinga is the Spanish developer that has been active in the field of radiance fields for a while. They started developing Volinga software a few years ago when NERF technology was still new and were exploring different solutions for virtual production workflows. And now with Gaussian splatting and Unreal Engine integration, their software bridges the gap between classic 3D geometry and the new world of neural rendering. Volinga's products are divided in two parts. Volinga Suite, which is a desktop program that allows us to create new Gaussian splatting models from our own scanned images locally on our own computer. And then we have this Volinga plugin for Unreal Engine. This plugin is the key tool when we want to connect 3DGS models with the lighting and rendering capabilities of real-time engine. The basic idea of Wallinger is that it utilizes its own radiance field format, which has this file extension nvol. All Gaussian models, whether they are standard .plY files or .splat files, must be first converted to this nvol format in order to work with Wallinger plugin in Unreal Engine. The conversion is made very easy. You can either use the suit software for this or you can import the PLY files directly into the Unreal. When the Wallinger plugin is installed, it will automatically understand and do an nvol translation as soon as you drag the PLY file into Unreal Engine. Envol files have the special feature that they can preserve high dynamic color space information and thus bring more possibilities for professional use in a game engine environment. The latest version of the Wallinger suit supports draining from EXR image format, which means that the produced model is valid for these 
ACES color standard required by the film industry. The role of the Wallinger suit program in all this is mainly that it offers the opportunity to train Gaussian models locally on your own computer. Training can also be done from the pre-generated call map data, which naturally speeds up the production of the final Gaussian model. In the suit, you can also combine several Gaussian models together and implement modified environments. And besides the native Envol format, you have also this option to export the asset into PLY file so that you can use it on other applications and editors as well. So let's move on to dealing with the Wallinger blogging itself then. As soon as that we have Wallinger installed and the correct license information connected to it, we will get a Wallinger icon like this in this main bar in Unreal. And once we have imported a working Envol file, we can drag it into the viewport. It can take a while before the model will appear into the level. It depends on how heavy your file size is. But once you get it in there, you can reorient and transfer it to better fit into your scene. Now this Wollinger icon will work as a toggle button, where you can sort of turn the Gaussian model on and off. When it is turned on, the model is able to receive light changes from the engine. And here, from this important submenu, we can for example change the ambient light that the model itself is illuminating. But here I can see that the sky in the model is looking very strange. And it is because the splats from the original Gaussian model is blocking the view. And we can only partly see the dynamic sky, which is made by the engine. So they are not mixing together that well. In Wallinga there is the option to use a crop box feature. And we can try to use it to cut off the sky. But since it is only box-shaped cutter, it can't solve the whole issue with this guy. This is a common problem with these Gaussian models that are generated from outdoor spaces. In the 3D model, pieces of the sky stuck to the edges of the structures and they create annoying contrast between the actual model and the background. It looks very similar to if you had done a very slobby background cut on the image in Photoshop. So I decided to take this model for even more detailed editing and try to clean up the sky in the Supersplat editor. Removing sky artifacts can be a tedious and time-consuming task, but Supersplat provides pretty good brush tools that make removing sky debris from the edges of the buildings and the tree branches reasonably easy. So here you can be a pretty careless and do the removals quite roughly. So after I have made the changes and cut off the sky, I re-imported the model into Unreal and now it looks much better already. Although the cut of the sky isn't quite perfect and removing all bright artifacts from the tree branches may be even impossible, I think this cropping is acceptable. And since we are doing a night scene, those details are going to get lost in the darkness anyway. So finally we get to the most interesting part. Now we can use all the lighting elements that Unreal has to offer and start relighting this square to more exciting atmosphere. I found placing all these spot and area lights very satisfying and creating this night setup made me think what would be an even more interesting and exciting situation that we could add to this deserted square. And that was when I got the idea to start building 
a virtual crime scene. The kind where we have an isolated area guarded by a few police officers and where the blinking light of the police cars could play a big role and immediately create a cinematic scenario. Most of these 3D models I found in the Sketchfab library. They were pretty well designed for the game engine usage, but of course I needed to tweak them a bit. Especially these police cars, so that they could have these dynamic blinking siren lights that would work in the scene when rendered. Gaussian splatting models lighting is not completely uncomplicated. Since these models are based on view dependencies, not all splats shades the light like normal surfaces, and it can cause these strange light disappearances when we rotate and move our viewing angle in the viewport. The Wallinger plugin provides these three normal generation methods which affects how light falls and is displayed over the Gaussians. So by alternating between these estimated normal methods, you can find either direct or inverse option, and which eventually adjust Gaussians normals in the position that fits your required angle of view. We can also play with the shadows Mesh object can actually cast shadow over the Gaussian surfaces, but not another way around. This can be demonstrated and seen well, for example in here when I enter into the light with my game character. Here we can see that character can cast shadows over the Gaussian object, but the object won't cast shadows on itself. This is because Gaussians doesn't work as other mess object in the scene. They are like air and you can easily walk through them. Only way to make this work is to generate a mess object that has the same form and surface structure as the Gaussian model. It can be then hidden underneath the Gaussians so it can then cast shadows and work also as a collision map. These hidden mesh shapes can also be created from simple primitive objects. And that way the character doesn't get through it anymore. But even though there are these limitations here, it's still great to see how, for example, a virtual camera understands the depth of the scene. And with that, we can also play with the depth of field effect. Unreal's camera system is very cool and it allows us to adjust the lens properties so that we can experience great cinematic views, whereby adjusting the foreground and background focus, we can even get nice bokeh circles around the light points. I really enjoyed building this night scene, but I must say it is very demanding on my computer. I still have a very average PC with an NVIDIA RTX 3070 graphics card with only 8GB of memory, so working with Unreal and Wallinger plugin tools is quite demanding and requires very powerful hardware with a lot of VRAM memory. Rendering graphics in real time with all these lumen settings really makes the fans fur and the viewport starts to lag very easily. But even so, this has been very fascinating and has shown new aspects of how Gaussian model can ultimately be used. This crime scene of mine could already function as a kind of a background element in a LED volume and work as a part of a virtual production environment. Or, in the other hand, this could be developed further as an adventure game experience. When we make a hybrid scene like this, where we combine a Gaussian environment that has been scanned from real location, and then add 
3D mesh objects into it so that we can produce a completely different atmosphere than the original location was. Then I believe we have achieved something really cool, where creativity gives full new possibilities to use this technology. I hope you found this video inspiring. I want to thank the Volinga team for letting me try out the latest version of their software. It's exciting to see where this will go on from here. If you liked the video, please give the like and subscribe to the channel. I think it's time to switch back to the daytime mode again. Until the next time, thanks for watching.